Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the book of Boba Fett. I'll say right off the bat, I'm enjoying the effort they're making to give these shows some of the old flavor of the originals and what we loved about them. So I'll even include real quick Season 1 and 2 of The Mandalorian, I enjoy, maybe a little overhyped, and now we get to the book of Boba Fett. I enjoyed it, but some things the show does just boggle my mind, it, it, it shocked me in a way, like, and not in a good way. So, I'll just start this by saying, the progression of the show inter interested me, I was and and still am on board. Like I said, overall, I enjoyed it. We start off the show with the same creative team, if I'm correct. Because it's created by John Favreau. Um, and it's starring Timora Morrison, Ming-Na Wen, Pedro Pascal, who was the Mandalorian. And they're keeping the same characters, the ones you know, and it fits in. You're even kind of putting the... Um, original prequels in because you got the Boba Fett who um, you know is the replacement for the original but because it's you stay show Django it's him so it makes sense and I'm okay with all that I'm on board I think there were a couple of decisions during the first four episodes or so that I would have done differently but fine it's the direction of the show I give it props thumbs up um, I think the Written by John Favreau. The directors do change here and there, but Robert Rodriguez, the first one and the third one. And as I'm going through it, it looks like John Favreau wrote the whole season. And with the familiar faces and the, the theme sticking, I'm not surprised that this is going to be really loved by the audience who loves The Mandalorian. And for me, it's such a breath of fresh air because of how bad things are for me with Star Wars coming, I guess, after The Force Awakens. With those two movies that are horrible pieces of garbage, ruining things for me in that sense. They won't tarnish anything that I love about the books or the original series or even when I want to pick on the prequels for how shitty um, they did things. But... um. I'm liking it. There's a flavor to it. There's a signature to it that he captures as Boba Fett, and I'm, I'm along with it. A couple of the decisions I would have went with differently might have been, hey, let's not make it that Boba doesn't know how to fight with a stick and stuff, and let's make it that his injuries prevent him from doing things. Demystifying the character a little bit. You know, this is Boba we know from not only the original series, well, you know, he doesn't do much, but capture and Solo. But you've got now the um, runs of the animated show, so you have some knowledge of him, and he's filtered through. And I thought they were going to go in a different direction, so it's only a difference of, hey, you know what, I would have done that differently, but the shows are done well, the music, the effects. I might go with a different tone. Like, I wouldn't try to interject so much humor in this as they are doing. But again, done well. If, you, if, it, if things are done well, I'll grant it their choice. It's, to me, like, you know, I might have I wrote the episode and pitched it differently. And, but whatever they did came out fine. It, it, it's good. And, you know, we start with the first episode and we're getting through um, a flashback. You know, I guess right at the Return of the Jedi where he escapes from the pit the Salak Pit, and again, I, I'm okay with the flashbacks and what they did and how they did it, I just would have paced it differently and maybe did it a little, you know, differently, because looking at it in hindsight now, it's seven episodes only, and I'll get to the craziness at the end, because it's just really <laughs> mind-boggling to me, but like I said, you get into the first four episodes, it's the journey of Boba Fett, he escapes, how he integrates himself with this, um, I don't know what they call him, tribe, as he says everybody needs a tribe, with the, uh, um, you know, the Tusken Raiders, 
and I get it. The story they told was, you know, what could change a man in a sense and how he changes his values. Fine. That journey done pretty well, although, again, I think they interject things at a certain time and pace to keep things going, and it, it, it doesn't feel like it's organically flowing. But a minor nitpick, as I said, um, you know, we're also getting uh, a, a kind of through line, underlying storyline that's going to connect in the future, but it's done very, it's, it's a little murky on what's going on, but it leads up to basically him getting his ship, so the flashbacks coincide with what happened in season one of The Mandalorian, I guess. You know, when you see uh, Shenick Fan, the assassin, um, shot and left for dead. So they're, they're using a technique of just cutting back flashbacks and fitting in what Boba was doing after he got out of the Sarlacc pit. Why he might be a changed person, and again, I think it's done excellent. Um... I really have no problems here except for minor nitpicks that I want to do differently. Um, and again, when you got a show where you show a guy who's brutal and gets the job done, and you interject the humor here and there, you know, I think you got to be careful with that. For me, you, you, I think it's going to go well with everybody, but kind of silly saying it, right? Because if I'm in a pitch room and they're like, yeah, well, you know, do we do it your way? We lose 30% of our ratings. Like, I don't know, but... <laughs> It just feels weird to me. Watching the first episodes, like I said, seemed to be a nice chunk of this season that decided to flesh out Boba. Let's give him some real world experience to show. Not that he's just got this mist defying aura around him. And he learns about his fighting from them and about family and tribe. And he's got a journey to go on. It feels good. It feels um, well worth the journey so far. And if I said it before, directed by Robert Rodriguez, but the second one is Steph Green. The third one is Robert Rodriguez. The fourth one is Kevin Tankhorin. Then we get to episode... Oh, by the way, they're using this, um, like, Boba's going into a back to tank, and he's getting flashbacks and stuff, and he's, but he's healing. So they're making the uh, progress, at least showing it, of... Kind of being acid damaged from the Sarlacc pit to being fully healed. You know, as much as a you know, 60-year-old man is going to be healed or whatever he is. But, um, and they're using that as the time he goes into the back to tank and he'll have these memories and flashbacks. Or, you know, filling in the gaps. I thought it was done pretty well. Like I said, it's hard to do flashbacks, but I just might have did it in a different pacing and, you know focus on one thing or another because all right so let's get into the zaniness of this season and what happened here so uh, like i said i'm up to episode four i'm along for the ride i didn't know much about the show i didn't do any deep dives or you know i, I just came in blank because I, in a way i was avoiding it but it just wasn't on my radar to begin with except for the one or two things you might see from a family member on facebook so all right, we get to episode five, uh, Return of the Mandalorian, directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. All right, yes, I don't have to explain who she is, right? This just fucking goes bonkers. So as I'm watching it, there's this voice in my head going, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. So maybe they're going somewhere different. Don't do it. And it kind of, you know, gave me the impression of, um, you know, showing an episode focused on the Mandalorian. You just cut, just, you know, you, you, whatever's going on for the first, last four episodes with the um, Boba Fett, fuck it. Because it just felt like that. Like, holy shit, let's just wedge this in here. But don't worry, I got a way to fit it in eventually. But it's that premise alone it's pretty good right okay you know i can go back to um i love it a bionic man a bionic woman and they would you know i could see one episode being focused on one and you can feel it can come together but this feels so shockingly out of um almost a desperation of people's expectations of what's going to happen with grogu and luke because 
for fuck's sake. They go too far. I don't understand why they couldn't just make it a, um, you know, his, um, his journey was more of a personal one, but it did kind of have to do with Grogu. I was fine with that. But, but this episode is a real, um, uh, struggle for the Mandalorian, which is Din Djarin. And he's trying to find his people, and he's got to get this um, gift made for his Grogu, and he misses him, and there's some honor things going on, the way he, you know, betrayed their code, and he, you know, got that really cool um, forged, uh, I don't know what they call her, um, oh, damn, I wish I knew. Anyway, he's, he goes to the mother of Mandalorian, you know, she forges the weapons, and it's been in the other seasons, and he's had things made for himself, but he wants to make something for Grogu. And the journey to get there was, you know, interesting, and he's damaged, he's the struggle, and he's using the dark saber. All right, so we go season two, Mandalorian, he gets the dark saber, there's some questions he asks here and there, and you get a better explanation, because it's the Mandalorians, they talk about it, he gets challenged, and this episode on its own is really good. And like I said, there's just this part of my head that's telling, just saying, no, don't do it, don't do it. And for this episode, they really don't do it. So I had a feeling that this was going to be maybe cut short by Boba Fett. So, like I said, you got four episodes. It's the journey of Boba Fett. He's going from the Return of the Jedi and his progression and how he's a new person in a sense. And we get cut into the Mandalorian. And his journey to find his own people again, who were missing and a lot of them died to help him. Um, the armorer, uh, he wants her to fashion something for Grogu, and he's going to go because he cares about him and he wants to give him a gift. And I thought at this point, when the Boba Fett angle happened, he would be taken away from that journey. So we would see that in another thing. And mind you, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, this is even from what I watched The Mandalorian. If they play it smart, they keep Grogu out of the show for a season. I mean, these aren't long seasons. Build it up with some steady pacing and then bring him back and make a wow moment out of it. But anyway, we're in episode five of season one of The Book of Boba. Focus on The Mandalorian, finding his people, the armorer, getting a gift made for... Grogu finding out about his um, dark saber. Lots of struggle. Good episode. I liked it. Then we got Dave Filoni. Yeah, the the Dave Filoni. Not to explain who he is. He's like uh, you know the prodigy of George Lucas. Knows everything. Rebels TV show. The you know all the animation like the head honcho. All right. So, they are, first off, they bring back one of my favorite characters, uh, Timothy Oliphant, but, you know, give it, um, I don't know, uh, oh, so, I'm thinking about this turn of the season where, once I thought they were going to distract the Mandalorian and bring him in, they go through this insanity of bringing Dejarin to a forest world where he's going to bring the thing to Grogu. And I'm like, fine. But again, that voice is saying, no, no, no. We're in episode six. They're doing a little tie in to Timothy Oliphant and the Marshal. And we're going into. Grogu and Dejarin is met by Ashoka Tano and is convinced if he talks to Grogu, it's going to make things hard. Meh, okay, you know what? Fine. And again, don't do it. Don't do it. I don't. And then they show Luke. They show Grogu. They show training. They do homages to movies and trying to get the Jedi through line through and um and I'm, I'm just my mind's going like what are they doing here like what's going on are they setting this up 
for what will happen in season two? Are they doing a Luke show? Like, what's going to spin off from this? Like, but you're doing too much. You're showing Luke too much. He's talking too much. Is this too much going on? And it's season one of the Book of Boba Fett. After episode four, you went right to the Mandalorian. You did a little, you know, twisty twisty where uh, Fennec Chan or whatever asks him for help. He says, oh, I got to bring this gift to somebody. They... He doesn't get distracted and go with her. No. He goes to see Grogu. He can't. So he leaves. That's the gist of that. But there's this scene with Luke throughout the fucking show. And by the way, he looks much better than he did in the other one. I'll grant it that. But when you're putting this stuff in the show and you're redeeming a character or you're at least giving him just what he was due why do you ruin it like I knew something was going to happen when they ruin it for me anyway and this dilemma that happens in the show in this episode where Luke turns to Ahsoka Tano and says mind you this is after most of all the shit that you see all the wisdom and all the you know uh, introspection and all the ways of trying to figure out what's going on. Like I said, I'm not trying to give too much away because I know this is pretty new, it's technically, given all the spoilers. But Luke turns and then he says to Ahsoka, I believe, something like, I don't know what to do with him. And my mind went, What the fuck are you, what are you talking about? This fucking powerful, somewhat powerful Jedi. Sets a beacon off on some planet that you feel in the Force. You get in your X-Wing, you've traveled there, you destroy droids. You take the kid, kid, whatever, 50-year-old Yoda baby. And you don't know what to do. Now, in, in theory, this could be the first season of a Luke show where... You see the dilemma he has. He doesn't believe he's a Jedi Master. He doesn't feel like he's a real Master. His training's not going as well as he thought. Uh, Ahsoka's, whatever. He's got uh, some kind of sounding board. And the fucking fact that she said something like, you're like my father, you're like your father. I don't know. My brain wanted to fucking explode. But you're doing all this in season one, episode six of the Book of Boba Fett. You're so distanced from what's going on in Boba Fett land. And don't get me wrong, they try to interject it here and there, you know. They fucking got the marshals, and they've got to build a... They need muscle. That's why they went to the Mandalorian. It's going to be a showdown on Tatooine. And Boba Fett's the dying diamo, whatever the fuck. And he's standing his ground. He won't take shit. He wants to set things right in a better criminal way. You know, to better criminal warlord. Yeah. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter when Luke's fucking running through forests with a fucking baby Yoda on his back and he's saying things like, oh, mentioning Yoda's name, giving lessons, talking about things, and then going, I don't know, like, yeah, it, it kind of, it, it could kind of fit if you had a fucking season to set this up. Like, couldn't it be the backstory of the third season of The Mandalorian? Where this concern for Grogu is impacting the Mandalorian's way of life. He, it's distracting him too much. He's making mistakes. So I don't know. And then you twist that. You, you show the mirror verse of that. Of Grogu having a hard time learning. And what is the attachment to the Mandalorian. Like, I, I get it. I get it. You're in episode 6 of the Book of Boba Fett. There's only one more episode left. And now I'm with a fucking CGI Luke Skywalker training a Yoda baby. That whole dichotomy. You know, Yoda was 800, 900 years old. Training Luke, you're too old. And he's 50. There's so much, so much that could be done here. And as soon as the episode's getting ready to end, I'm going, did they do this to satisfy people that Grogu will be back for season three of fucking Mandalorian? And my and in a, in a way, my mind goes, no way, they can't do this. And Luke does one of the shittiest fucking things. I've, uh, 
this is going to be one of those, oh, it's a Jedi test and this and that. Yeah, I get it. I read the books. I read like every legacy, or well, they call it legacy books now, up to like 2010 or whatever. And even picked a couple here and there that I have read. It just felt so rushed, so phony to me, not earned at all, not in the least. You took Grogu at the end of season two. Great ending. Luke shows up, takes the kid. And you want to reconcile that in episode six of the Book of Boba Fett. It wasn't enough that Boba has a tie to the Mandalorian where he can go for help and say, look, I need... Fennec Shang goes after me, says... Great thing, like, oh, I'll do for free. And he's muscle. Fine, you know, it works on every level. And the episode itself would work as a season, maybe. But holy shit. And then we're getting introduced to people from the animated show that I'm trying to get into, but my brain won't fucking work. It just won't function here. You got this Cad Bane from the show looking insane. Things going on, like um, like that subtlety plot that was supposed to be revealed about who killed the Tusken Raiders and who Boba should be really mad at. Uh, okay, and but you just fucking showed R two D two Luke training, fucking homages, Ahsoka Tano, Jedi values, and where the choices should be made. I mean, you did it all in this fucking one episode, and it's insanity. So, again, I'm coming into this kind of blind. I kind of know things I might have heard, but I don't pay attention. They're not locked in there. So I'm taken by surprise. I'm watching four episodes of The Journey of Bobo, who's getting his due for what, you know, we have to flesh his character out. He can't just be this one-liner guy who shoots good, right? Fine. And then, boom, episode five, let's see what's going on with Din Djarin, the Mandalorian. Excellent. He goes to fucking find his people. The journey is hard and hard fought, gets challenged, the Darksaber, blah, 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 little Jedi talk and stuff like that. And then I got to make the gift for Grogu. Excellent. Fine. Yes, they might have ripped off the Lord of the Rings, but okay. Distract him. Take that fucking opportunity at the end of episode five and Boba... I mean, uh, and the Mandalorian goes with Fennec Shand. But he has to go visit his friend first. And they have the episode set up so you could actually have Dijon go to the planet Grogu's on, see Ahsoka Tanu, see a fucking shadow of Luke and a far distant image of him and Grogu on some fucking beautiful mountaintop. And get the same growth of character development. Where the Mandalorian admits, you know, he really misses the kid and he's thinking about him. And he wants to give him this gift that'll protect him. Fine. The, you know, you're going to make it hard on him with Ahsoka. It all works. No, we're going to show CGI Luke. Have him walk around, talk, do fucking exercises. Uh, and... And then you get this ultimatum at the end, and I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. You gotta be kidding me, because I knew immediately what was gonna happen. There's no doubt, there's no dilemma about that, because you just felt it. You felt it coming from the beginning. And then, boom. We're in episode seven. The big baddies, it all happens here. Fucking Boba, Shenik Fang, awesome looking fucking Wookiee, bad guy, good guy, slash anti hero, whatever the fuck. And you get to the end, right? I'll just fucking get it there. And by the way, there's a really good uh, little thing going on with Dijar and the Mandalorian and the new ship he gets because he wants another Razor Crest. And it kind of makes sense if you're a fucking bounty hunter, you need that whatever but this chick who we know from the other one um decides like you know hey i can get this fucking starfighter naboo 
And it, it's pretty cool. Anyway. All right. So we're in episode seven. It's the last episode. Everything fucking happens here. There's really no what's going, like, what is the next step? In, in, in a sense, there, of course there is, and but no major cliffhanger plot flow through that is really getting you. And like I said, there's an element of awesomeness throughout the whole show. Same thing about the Mandalorian when um, you look at how beautiful some things are and how perfect some moments are. I described in season two where um, the comedian um, Bill Burr has one of the most gripping best scenes maybe ever in Star Wars. And you can tell that love is there. This is just mostly a you didn't do it the way I would have done it, but you did great with what you have it except for this little piece here and that would be probably episode five and six now episode five i'm given a pass but it does interject and really draw you out from the boba fett world and okay it's done fine and it's their choice to kind of do that but as you're trying to piece this together and show this th story with boba's people getting reinforced or not getting reinforced and this new band of people he has one is look a ridiculous suit on i wish they changed his fucking outfit but okay you've got your little posse and you might have some future stars of the star wars universe in here uh, okay fine but everything you can imagine happens in this episode there's shit going on we get the resolution of fucking grogu obviously and i'm like what the f like it just it's it's still that feeling of it was done good and it, like I said it's such a breath of fresh air from the garbage that they put out with those movies and stuff so you know I'm enjoying it and but when I get to the end of this season I think how I think about the first three episodes of WandaVision uh Marvel uh Disney Marvel whatever the, that pairing is they have a show they, it was the first show they did on Disney I believe it was called WandaVision and obviously, it's the characters from the movies, Wanda and Vision. And the first three episodes are bonkers. I don't know what the fuck's going on. What are they fucking doing? Looking back on hindsight, it's one of my favorite shows they've done. But I have to admit, those three episodes probably turn people off. People were confused, not knowing what the fuck is going on. But it had its own style, flavor, and looking back on it, it was a real risk-taking move, and I love it. I'm not sure about this, though. I'm looking at the Book of Boba Fett as a potential failure. In that, if you ask me, you've got this character, Boba Fett, being played by, um, I don't know if I say his name right, I don't know, but, um, what is it, Tem Tem Temora? Yeah, Temora Morrison, uh... Daimyo of Tatooine. He needs, his character needs, and I don't know if I'm, I mean the actor. You know, no, I don't think so, but he needs this time to catch up to Boba Fett of what we envisioned him to be. Because, like I said, you're talking about Boba Fett makes his first appearance. He's cut out of the fucking movie because you don't even see him in the first movie, right? The original Star Wars. You see him in the second one, he does barely nothing. In the sec third one, he's thrown into the pit. He has a couple of lines. That mystique grows, and you might some, find some ancillary products and franchise stuff, like some books, and find it fleshes something out. And you now see the clone aspect put in for, because of the movies, and the younger version of Boba running through the animated series. I think this character, the actor, not that his talent wasn't there, but also needed these episodes to build up because you demystified him a little bit. You know, you, you to me, he should have showed them how important a baton is compared to the stick, and still teach him how to use the stick. But once you take him and you kind of 
you know, show the flaws and the man's, and you build them up in his, in his own right. No, they did it. They did it good. You still need more episodes. You don't cut them off at episode four with the flashbacks and the back to tank. The war's coming, and then, like I said, episode five, the Mandalorian, great episode. Love seeing the armor. History on the dark saber. Holy shit, I love it. Uh, techniques on the dark saber. How to use it. How to fight with it. What its flaws are. Why you're not using it properly. Listen, and on its own, these are great episodes in a sense. Episode six. What the fuck is going on? Episode seven. Boom. Let's wrap everything up. Bang, smash, boom, explosions, war, fucking. New characters, spotlights, everybody gets their moment. And in general, I'm not the, let's substitute physical melee fighting for blaster fire. Because once you get that mix, that balances off, it just doesn't work anymore. Right? I mean, you, I, I rolled my eyes so hard in that fucking rogue squadron movie where the blind guy is using a stick or a metal pole whatever the fuck it is it's silly it's unbelievable it's fucking dumb unless you show me some kind of ripple wave like uh, when you look in the sun where his swings of the staff are creating like he's using the force to generate massive impact things like that right uh with the mandalorian season one you have this amazing um fighter real life fighter gina carano and her character was beloved too much physical stuff it works for a good amount i mean she's so good at it and i guess you got so many good people working on it that it works but that balance is off for me so you've got a fucking wookie you said okay let's put this wookie and let's shoot him 15 times right because we got to get him fucking throwing people punching people slashing people and He's getting blasted times and he's getting physically attacked. But that that feeling of watching people pull out melee weapons gets old in this type of genre. You have to go back a little bit and kind of tip the balance the other way. The Mandalorian probably did it better and in a way of that classic um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the guy pulls out the sword, he pulls out the gun, sh- you know, shrugs his shoulders and shoots him. A little more of that, maybe, to highlight it, but I don't want to see a quick cut to a slow motion image of people pulling out weapons. Now, there are situations, you know, Jedi pulls out a lightsaber, someone might pull out a vibro blade if it's able to stop it, and let's not get into the fucking Mandalorian's Beskar staff, right? Because, anyway, spoilers. There's elements that you can work off of. There are ways you could put these things in as more viable and why people would be using them more often than not. But it doesn't feel like that, and it feels like um, they're having a lot of fun. I, I'm not saying this is done bad. These are just choices I wouldn't make. There's no way I'm giving the go-ahead of putting that episode 6 in this season. There's no fucking way. Someone comes to me with this idea, I go, okay, we gotta set this up. Let's do a mini-series. Let's do a four-episode Grogu special. What? Yeah. And then we'll lead that into, bam, something, right? I mean, I, I don't know. And, and this is the most you know, perplexing thing about this season i don't know how to fucking rate this not that i ever come on here and give things a rating these are you know fresh takes you know my first impressions type thing but you get this uh, error of being able to binge watch stuff and you watch and you get through them and i'm like what just happened did you really want to do a five episode season and you made it seven did you Want to please people that wanted to make sure if Grogu was coming back or not? Like, and you had to do this with fucking Luke and this whole fucking dilemma to make a fucking alter, you know, alter. Oh my god, it's an ultimatum at the end. And I'm like, why do that now? In this fucking episode, 
So this voice in the back of my head that kept saying, don't do it, don't do it around episode four, five, probably is a bias thing. I could maybe watch this again and have a totally different take. But I don't know. Um, don't get me wrong, watching Luke at the end of season two of The Mandalorian was fucking epic. It's fit in a way, but you took Grogu. That was heavy. This is The Mandalorian. It's his show, right? It's his dilemma. Why waste it? What the fuck? Why waste it? It just feels so wasted. And quick and interjected and forced in and wedged in. It just feels wrong. And then we end it. Again, filtered with some decisions I might not have agreed on. Um, but I'm not going to say it's done bad. I think they're keeping up on um, music and visuals. And music was one of my first things. Like little musical cues can really draw my attention away and go, what the fuck? Like it doesn't fit. Like, I mean, and I'm picky maybe. Okay, so I'm an ass. But the Book of Boba Fett. Seven episodes. Jesus, like, this is perplexing. I don't... Okay, if you're a fan of The Mandalorian, yes. You're gonna... I totally recommend it. This will be a... Um, you know, this will be something I think you'll enjoy and have fun with it. If you're a slight fan of Star Wars, you're gonna love it. You're gonna see Luke, and you're gonna, right? You know? Oh shit, I remember that scene and he running through the forest and Okay, fine. But I don't know. If you're a, if maybe a purist is a better word to call it, or somebody who's just sick of watching the bad decisions they do with characters. I don't know. I try to be level headed and open minded. Like I said, I would recommend the show. You like the Mandalorian, it keeps the theme, the flavor. I would like a better balance of things and my choices would be a little different, but a fun romp, fun ride, get through it, blasters and all the shit, you know, it's Star Wars, they, it's closer to what I would want, done with skill and obvious love, you can feel it throughout the show, uh, that seems real genuine and that goes a long way too. Although, you know, you watch, I know so that I love, and you hear horror stories, like, behind the scenes, how much they hate each other or something, you know, so I don't know. Hey, if you're that good an actor, fuck it. The Book of Boba Fett. I guess we can call it season one. I don't know what the fuck they're going to be doing. I think it's worth, a sh worth it, but for me, you fucked up this ending. You messed up season one. For me, you just went too far at the end. You had a great opportunity to do a solo Mandalorian episode and pull him into the Boba Fett universe of, you know, your, what you're creating and get right back into it. You didn't, and you did a fucking episode paying homage to Jedi, Luke Skywalker, Yoda, Ahsoka Tano, and you hit so many themes, and, and then you made Luke go, I don't know what to do. It just felt wrong it felt forced and way too convenient to have the next episode and fucking grogu is there on the mandalorian cast again like are you fucking joking me did we just do this in boba fett's uh, fucking season like are you gonna do that because the dilemma at the end is an obvious one for me and you know, there's hope that, oh, you know what? They'll do the right thing. There'll be a fleshed out arc of season three where this conflict, you know, builds up and you show amazing character growth. Because that's what I think they tried to do. So for me, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it averaged out to pretty good but it could have been great i could have loved it i could say i don't love it that i know that shit at the end is just way too much for me but 
That's my opinion. You love the Mandalorian. You really get into it. These, the things, the nitpicks don't bother you, or you don't even notice them. You're gonna fucking love it. It's done good, well. There's so many elements that really thrive right now and work on every angle. If you're a fan or not, and I think that's what's gonna be special. They're trying to do something that's gonna draw audiences, and maybe not just Star Wars. So you know what? Fuck me and my things. But I think there's mistakes you make, and you own up to them, and you're trying to, you know, move on and accept it. Or as if you're the showrunners, you know, you don't listen to an asshole doing a podcast where, you know, you know, 25 to 50 people are gonna hear it. But, um, like, what you do, guys? Like, what the fuck happened there? Like, I'd love to know if there was some in because that just doesn't feel right. So I don't know. We'll see. When I guess the next thing comes, because I'm not even sure what's coming next. Are we in the waiting phase for season three of Mandalorian? Are we doing an Ahsoka thing? Are we doing a guy I don't really know about or didn't even like in a movie? What is it? Cassie and Andor or something like that? Like, I'm not sure what's coming next. But just rambled about the Book of Boba Fett. Enjoyable in the long run. Could have been great. Averaged out for me some craziness decisions they made but i'm excited for what comes next in this tv you know universe uh like i said it's a breath of fresh air actors are on par um they keep it up um there's really no weaknesses that i see except for like you know it doesn't make your new wookie character stand out to me when you do some of the nonsense they talked about like you know what he's cool i get it diesel whatever the Book of Boba Fett. Give it a shot. Let me know if you bug the fuck out too because that just was a little craziness. I hope everybody's doing well. I'll talk to you all next time. Take care.